Hi, everybody. Will Alexander from Will Alexander's Dog Show Tips. This week on the interview chair, we have Daniel Augustus. I bet you were all wondering where Daniel was hiding. I know exactly where he's hiding, and I found him. Sit back and enjoy Daniel. Hello, everybody. Today on the interview chair, we have Daniel Augustus. Hi. <laughs> How you been, Daniel? Fabulous. Good. Thank you. <laughs> How have you been, Will? I've been great, thank you. Great. Busy. Great. Yeah. How's that? Uh, what have you been doing during these crazy pandemic times? Um, I've been busy working, not in dogs, actually, uh, doing hair and um working in uh, uh, beauty, um, retail beauty businesses as well. Oh, nice. All right, well, let's get right into it then, Danny. Tell me how you got your start in the sport of dogs. Okay, so um, I was a, um, a lad, if you will, in Toronto uh, between 15 and 16 years of age, um, and I became obsessed with purebred dogs and um, started begging my parents for uh, a puppy. So they placated me by letting me try to find a breed that I thought I would be interested in. Now, we lived in uh, Toronto um, in an apartment, a large apartment, but it did have access to a yard. So... Uh, I, we didn't think a large dog would really be apropos, so I decided on a toy breed, Pomeranians. So there's the little gay boy with his Pomeranian. My parents let me. Um, I saved up as much money as I could, and they made up the difference. And I bought a, a very pretty Palm bitch from Edna Bradley in Toronto. Okay. Now, Edna Bradley is of note because her sister was Evelyn Kenny. Oh, there you go. I know you know who she is. Um, so anyway, long, long story short, um, I started going to shows with Edna Bradley um, and her husband, Doug, and finished my little bitch all on my own. And then I bred her and I got a litter and I kept a puppy and so on and so forth. Um, when I was uh, uh, 21, um, I decided it was time for me, after having gone to school in Toronto, um, I decided to move to the States because that's where the action was, right? Yeah. Um, and I worked, uh, the very first person I ever worked for was Pam DeHater, who had oh, yeah. a Doberman yeah. hand. Yeah. So put a pitch. Sure, pick. Picture it, Sicily, 1922. Uh, Pam Jader and I go to the Mexic uh, the New Mexico Arizona circuit in a large motorhome with I don't know 18 Dobermans. Now, that was an eye opener, let me tell you. But it was so much fun, and I met people like Marge Brooks and. Um, this very famous Doberman dog named Browns B. Brian, uh, who all Doberman people know who that is. It was a very famous sire. We actually went to their house. They inv invited us to their home. And I actually met the dog. He was fabulous. And um, so I had a lot of those kind of experiences uh, on that circuit. And it was great. So... When we got back to uh, Detroit, which is where Pam lived at the time, oh, okay. um, she quickly figured out that I liked hair. Um, she caught me trimming her Samoyed before it went in the ring. Like, I mean, trimming. Um, and was none too happy, of course. So she introduced me to Todd Patterson and Jerry Edwards, who I knew from shows in Toronto. And I went to work for them. So, and I was there for two years and I learned a lot. Um, very interesting. Uh, the shenanigans. <laughs> anyway, um, 
suffice it to say, two years was good. I had met Tim Brazier at Chicago International, and he and I hit it off, and he was showing um, a rim-skilled bartered bride at that point, um, who, as you probably remember, did a lot of winning. And anyway, when um, I left uh, Detroit and went back home to Toronto to kind of re configure. Um, I got a phone call the next day and it was Timmy inviting me to go work for him in Northern California. So I thought, hot dang. And he sent me a ticket and uh, alas, my poor mother had to say goodbye to me again as I flew off to uh, California. And I worked for Timmy for uh, seven years. Um, we lived in uh, the uh, around the Bay of San Francisco in a place called Moraga near Walnut Port. And Margot Journey entered the picture then because she owned the house and Timmy showed mainly for her. And um, that was an adventure. And we <laughs> kind of outgrew the space because it was residential, right? So then we moved to Napa and um, Margot found a fabulous house uh, at the end of a private road in Napa. We had gates and everything. It was really great. <clears throat> and so we all moved in there, you know, um, all the livestock and the people and who, the chattel who, who were and all, all that. People? Um, problem was, are you speaking to me? Yeah. yeah. Who were all the people? Who were all the Oh, well, I'm, yes, I'm going to tell you that. Okay. okay. So at that point, Mark Shanoff, um, uh, had just finished high school and much to his parents' chagrin, he did not go to college. He came directly to California and we picked him up in San Francisco and he came up to Napa and Shelly, um, Jesus. Green. Green, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Shelly Green was also there, also there. Uh, and that was, uh, and then of course we had Margot and her, uh, she had a companion whose name was Olive Dricos uh, from Canada, actually. Um, really? wow. And then, of course, we had very colorful servants, right? Domestics that were very fun. Um, anyway, that's the set. Um, and, and, you know, we would do things like uh, on, on pretty days, go out, which in California is most of the time. We'd go outside and groom dogs by the pool on tables, you know. Um, so it was really, a, a, I'm sorry? <laughs> we do that here too. Oh, of course you do. Um, <laughs> yeah, in January. But um, <laughs> the deal was that we had this idyllic six months there. And then I don't want to make this long winded, but at the end of the prop, the, the front of our property, right outside the gates, there was a little kind of cottage on one side and one on the other side. And in those cottages lived, um, I, what do you people call them these days? I think rednecks would probably be a good description. And they bred pigs. They bred pigs, hogs, pigs. Do you know how bad pigs smell? Up to that point, I had had no idea. Anyway, even though they bred pigs and lived in these hovels, they seemed to take umbrage that we lived in this stately, beautiful place with, you know, uh, the front of it was like a park. So we used to uh, exercise the dogs and uh, lead train them. And, you know, it was fabulous. Anyway, one day, I'll bring this to a close this part. One day we're sitting having cocktails in the house. And we had some dogs loose. So we had the corridor door closed from the kitchen to um, the foyer and the bell, the doorbell rang and Timmy said, oh, I'll go get it. So he does, he goes and answers it. We're chatting and having a cocktail. At some point, about 20 minutes later, I'm like, where's Timmy? I thought he went to answer the door. Timmy comes through the, the connecting door and he's absolutely white as a sheet. And we're like, what, who was that? What happened? Turned out it was the neighbors with their shotguns, kind of basically, and I don't think it was a veiled threat, I think it was a threat, that if you want those, those uh, fruity boys and um, 
all those pretty, pretty fancy poodles to still live, we suggest you get out of here. You're not our kind of people. Anyway, Margot being Margot, I don't know if you knew Mar Margot Durney or not. Yeah, I never met her. Um, immediately got on the phone with Frank Sabella, who was a realtor at that point in Southern California. And she said, Frank, you have to get us out of here right now. They're going to poison and kill our dogs. Anyway, long story short, we moved crazy. down. I'm sorry? That's crazy. Wow. Yes. Well, <laughs> it's a fabulous life. Anyway, <laughs> we... we <laughs> move to a property that Frank bought and nobody can boohoo about it because it was in Malibu and Malibu for your readers or audience that doesn't know what it is, is a coastal community um, in LA that is right on the water. It's right across the street, right on the water of the Pacific ocean. So we had <clears throat> a place and it had, Margot had a house built on it. There was a little cottage on it that was Timmy's. And then we built the kennel down the hill. And it was a very nice kennel. And of course, then there was the Pacific Ocean, which is right across the road. So we were there for five years. And it was really great and lovely. And then at some point, Mark and I decided, it had been seven years at that point, that um, perhaps we would go on and find a path of our own. Um, and uh, so that's what we did. And we moved up to Northern California and uh, started um, working with Cheryl Gerds, her name is Braswell now, um, who uh, is very talented. Her mother bred miniature poodles and she breeds miniature poodles. And um, her kennel name is Fair Isle. Anyway, Cheryl's a very talented, very knowledgeable dog person. So we kind of joined forces and we were in Northern California uh, for a couple of years until I had the bright idea um, to move east. Because Mark was originally from the east, so he was fine with it. So we moved east and we kind of cohabitated with Michael Pawazrat in uh, like central Pennsylvania. And Michael Pawazrat is a wonderful human being. He's just a lovely, lovely man. Um, and until we could get on our own two feet, and then we moved to uh, a place on Long Island in New York. Uh, Hop Hog, which everybody made fun of me because I refused, I, I hated the name. Um, so I called it Hopage instead. <laughs> and they all made fun of me. Anyway, we were there for two or three years. It was owned by some clients of ours that we showed standards for. It was a very nice place. We liked it. Um, and then it was just eventually time to move to a bigger place, blah, blah, blah. So to make a long story short, we moved to New Jersey for a little bit. And then to Ohio, which I detested for a little bit on a horse farm. And then Margot bought a place on the eastern shore of Maryland, um, which we moved to. And there's a whole bunch of little stories about that, but I think it'll make it too long and involved to get into. So anyway, long story short, we eventually ended up up in uh, back up in Pennsylvania, uh, about an hour north of Philadelphia in the Allentown area. Yeah, I think it was a very, there. very beautiful uh, piece of property that had um, it was originally built in 1760. So the, the house was part of the original house was extant and they built on from there. And we had a show kennel and a boarding kennel. Uh, not anything I would ever want to have anything to do with ever again. Um, in my opinion, there is no such thing as a good boarding kennel, but that's my private opinion. Nobody get all upset. Anyway, um, so now from there, and then we went on to show dogs, etc. So you should ask me some questions. <laughs> well, I, that, I'm pretty sure that house, I think, can you hear me? <laughs> all I see is your I, I can hear you now. <laughs> that, that house, I think Allison and I actually visited you guys there once. Yes, that's I, right. I remember that, yeah. It was a bit, yeah, it was, it was, a, it was a lovely place. Yeah, it was. Okay. Yeah. And so, you know, we, we, we ended up, um, I think we moved there in 87 or 88 and um, Mark <clears throat> unfortunately fell ill in a 93 and uh, eventually passed away. And Margot preceded him by three or four months. 
so then we were kind of at the at the um, but you guys had maleficence, if you will. But when you when you and Mark were showing dogs, you guys had a lot of <laughs> a lot of highs though. Like you had some good times. Oh yeah, beautiful dogs. Oh, yeah, we did. Yeah, oh, no, we did. We did very well. Yeah. We did really, really well. Yeah. I mean, you know, um, Mark, Mark, and you knew him personally, of course. Um, Mark could be a difficult person. Uh, it's because he was a very exacting person. He was very truthful. He didn't like games. And his number one priority always, always was the health and the welfare and the happiness of the dogs. And it sounds trite to say that, but trust me, that was his thing. Um, so he didn't suffer fools gladly or well. Um, and so a lot of people, you know, I thought he was standoffish and um, unpleasant at times. Um, but it's really because he had a very, very, very um, focused, focused um, attention span. Yeah. And it may, you could be talking to him about how lovely you thought such and such looked at such and such in dog show. And he'd stop talking to you and, and yell over at one of the, the kids. Hey, change all the water buckets now. You know, I mean, that's just who he was. Um, anyway, um, so then we were at the mercy of uh, when Mark passed away of uh, Margot's dog, one of Margot's daughters. Um, and we won't get into the ifs, ands, or buts about that. But we um, moved to a place about an, uh, an hour north, actually a very beautiful place okay. um, in Walnut Hang Port. On, Daniel, Daniel. Um, Who's we now? Okay, so now we have Mary Ellen Fischler. Yep. We have Sean Nichols. And we have our wonderful Japanese girl, Yuko. Yeah. And we have me. Yeah. Oh, and we have Larry Cornelius. Yeah. And there's a whole backstory to that. You know, that'll be in the next book. But, um, <laughs> but anyway, we move, we move there. And as you can imagine, Will, um, having, having lost Mark uh, kind of kicked me in the pants emotionally. And um all of our clients wanted me to carry on, which was lovely. Um, I, you know what? I just didn't have it in me at that time. And I really wanted uh, Sean to be the one to, to, to go on, you know. Um, and that would have worked really well if it weren't for some circumstances um, that had to do with Mary Allen and Larry and blah, blah, blah. Suffice it to say, I bowed out. I moved and into town and became a normal, well, as much of a normal person as it's possible. Um, <laughs> I went to school and I became a hairstylist. And, um, you know, of course I'd go out there and all that kind of stuff. Sean, Sean was showing dogs every weekend and doing a fabulous job. He and Yuko would go off and, and, you know, do all that kind of business. He was having some real issues at that point with Mary Ellen and um, finances and all that. And I think the emotional aspects caught up with him as well. And he needed to take six months off. So kind of everything went the way of all flesh. Um, and... So that's where we were in 1994 and 1995. Oh, yeah. yeah. So proceed, sir. Well, okay. When did you decide to become a judge? When did you, when did you go for your judging license, Danny? Ah, okay. So um, I just thought it was a natural order of things. Um, I'd been told all my life that I had a good eye. I felt I did. And um so I think I judged my first dog show in Southern California. I mean, literally in a park and the, and the Pacific Ocean was like right at the foot of the park. It was a poodle club. I'm trying to remember the name of it now. That would be embarrassing. Um, anyway, um, it was a poodle specialty. And it was, back then they were still not lovely entries. And uh, that was in 97, in the spring of 97. Um, and that was a really fun experience. And I'd also uh, 
have been approved to do some toy breeds like Poms and Shih Tzus and Chihuahuas because I used to show them and, um, you know, stuff like that. But all Poodles, Afghans, um, Kerry Blues because I bred, bred them a couple of times. And those are my original breeds. Oh. Um, yeah. So. Out of all the dogs you guys dealt with, though, um, you, you had some beautiful dogs. Oh, I lost you. Where'd you go, Daniel? I'm right here. Okay. Um, just touch on some of the dogs you guys showed for me. Okay. Because <clears throat> um, you showed, I know, well, in standard your Canadian viewers, you, I know you guys showed Luton and Banner Waver. Yes. Yeah. Well, yes. So uh, one of my favorites, actually, um, one of my, uh, my favorite dogs that we showed, standards, certainly, owned by one of my favorite clients, whose name is Linda Campbell. Um, she sent us this dog. Well, the first dog, I should mention um, a banner waver, Darwin banner waver, um, who used to be shown by, Lin, uh, by, my, uh, by Susan Hillman, yes. who I loved amazingly. I loved Susan Hillman. And as we all know, she passed away. Um, and so we inherited a banner waver and Mark did really quite well with him. Yeah, he did won a raft of best in shows and he actually went best of opposite sex um at pca under frank of all people you could have knocked me over with a feather um and then came luton and luton was a much for me a much more elegant very upright typey dog um i just thought he was just a glorious dog and mark had just really started going with him and getting off you know getting like starting to get some traction when he was no longer able to show dogs. So I showed him a bit and did some nice winning when the group of ladies with him and some specialties. Interesting story. My first assignment, as I told you back in the day in uh, Southern California, Allison, her, her name is Allison Alexander. I don't know if you know her or not, but she was an interesting <laughs> character, and um, she's a, a, a buddy of mine. Anyway, doesn't she, unbeknownst to me, of course, show up in the standard variety at that specialty with Luton? <laughs> yeah. I and I, that. <laughs> I, I had a dog from England that was also there, shown by uh, 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 Rachel... Corbin, who is now married to Chris Mananopoulos, right? Um, and but the, 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 uh, the English dog was the class dog. Um, and I really made it a big, huge contest between the two of them. And people were enthralled. They were both beautiful dogs. And I ended up putting up Luton because in my mind, he was just slightly better. Um, and that caused a lot of controversy because, of course, I had shown the dog and Mark had shown the dog. Um, Anyway, so he was back, a beautiful back, dog, though. Thank you. Yes. He really yes. Was. Anyway, so um, so Luton and Banner, um, we bred a bitch named uh, Starina because we were in. Uh, Timmy Brazier used to show for a really lovely woman named uh, uh, Willie Salisbury, Eaton, Eaton Sander Poodles, and um, oh, I lost your volume. I lost your volume. You're gone. There we and go. Um, we uh, co-bred a litter or something. Anyway, so Timmy wanted their pick of the litter to be a, a black bitch who was beautiful. Um, and he insisted on naming it Eaton, um, which was fine. And um, our bitch, the white bitch, was Helena. And her name was Halcyon Helena. Yeah, and right. she did quite yeah. nicely. Yeah. Um, Starina uh, finished under Ed Biven at the PCA National by going best of winners. Now, that was a hugely thrilling win. Uh, Mark showed her from the puppy class. And that was a really great, great thing. Um, so those are some of the standards that really stand out for me. Um, miniatures, you know, uh, we had, of course... Um, that Shailene bitch, um, hello again to Shailene, um, who did a lot of winning. Um, she went best in show at Santa Barbara under Bill Taylor. 
Um, she won a raft of specialties. Um, the only place she didn't win was PCA. Um, and Ann Stevenson was doing the variety and made it between Crystal and Kathy Poe's bitch. Um, big, big, beautiful bitch that I really always loved. Barking. Oh, Jesus. It'll come to me. Give me a second. Um, she did a lot of winning. And then she had retired her, but brought her out for PCA. You know how some people do that, right? Um, and Kathy's Bitch won, shown by Barbara Humphreys. Um, and of course, you know, when you have that kind of quality and that kind of person judging, you know, you really can't get too mad at the, at the outcome, no matter who you are, except for our client. Eileen Price didn't fall into that category. She kind of lost her mind. <laughs> it was raging through the tents at PCA, trying to take all the, take, you know, her dogs, including dogs that Mark and I had bought that were ours. And of course, Mary Ellen was good for some things, because let me tell you, you were getting past her yeah, exactly. to get any dog out of a crate. <laughs> so anyway, so uh, that crystal bitch, hello, Gainer Shailene, um, really did some marvelous winning. Uh, uh, Carrier Week, Montgomery Weekend, which you're well aware of. Um, she went best in show at Hatborough over Peter's um, Wire Dog. Wow. You know who I mean? Um, also Excellence, yes. Pardon me? Also Excellence, excellence yes. yes. Patty. Who, yes. Was a very, who was a very beautiful dog. Oh, God, yeah. Under a carrier person, even. So that was a big coup. So she had some beautiful, beautiful wins. We had... Um, um, okay, so so Kathy Post, her her call name was Cynthia, and I can't. Do you know who I'm talking about? This is the bar barking. Yeah. What is it? I can't remember. No. Okay. Anyway, so then we really got interested in, in that line of dogs, Kathy Post stuff, and used her protocol dog, Barking uh, Protocol uh, Protocol, <clears throat> who was a Mark finished them actually. Um, and it was a very, very beautiful dog, white, tall, uh, but amazing producer. And we got, we got some beautiful, beautiful stuff that we were able to start our line with. Um, and um, it was fantastic. That was a really, that was kind of a, a really golden time in miniature poodles. I wish you could come back um, with a dog named um, uh, Halcyon Mandate that, uh, Margot owned that we bred, who was very beautiful and a very, very nice producer. Um, trying to think of other dogs. Wildways, um, Wildways Cara Denise, another one that 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 uh, um, Kathy Poe bred. Uh, and Mark, that was the last one he showed really. He won the variety with her at the garden. Um, and he really, really loved her. And she ended up living her life and uh, eventually just passing away on Mary Ellen's bed. So that's a pretty good life. Very pampered, spoiled dog. Um, and then toys, of course, the one that stands out the most for me, toy a poodle, would be a, actually a bitch that I, um, my dear, dear friend Arlene Scardo and I co-bred um, and named um, Arl Rich Halcyon Days. Um, very exquisite type, um, not a huge race around the ring. She had her own steady, elegant pace. So um, didn't do as much at Aubrey. She did win an Aubrey Best in Show under Henry Stecker, who also gave her Best in Show at PCA with none other than me showing her. She's a black because, bitch, right? I'm sorry? Is she a black bitch? No, white. No, well, she was I white. I got to mix up that. I'm thinking yeah. No, Mark had won miniatures as well with Denise, and he stayed on Denise, and I showed the toy. And literally, I, you could have just knocked me over when, when Henry pointed to her. But he, clearly, he really loved her. Um, and then later on, went on to give her an Aubrey Best in Show in pretty tough Eastern competition, actually. Um, so, yeah, you know, we had a lot to do with a lot of poodles and a lot of poodle breeders um it's been it's been great hmm? now what about the, some dogs that you judged um try to avoid dogs that are being shown now but oh, yeah. touch on some dogs that have made an impact on you that you, 
from a judging standpoint? So I would say a couple that stand out <laughs> for me, um, you know, when this peak thing really started going from England, you know, the, the peaks coming over here. So Hiram Stewart, you know who he is, um, had a dog. I don't recall his name, but he came over and started doing a huge amount of winning. And he was that dog was something to put your hands on and to watch. He was just so stately. And then, of course, you know, uh, Dave, David, um, Pete David, thank you. Um, <laughs> David. <laughs> um, it's interesting. When I was applying for Pete's, I went to this judging thing in uh, Indiana, Pennsylvania, and he presented Pete's. So God bless him. Didn't he bring this whole kind of bunch of Pete's and put them on a table? You know how they used to do in England? Mm -hmm. And we had to each kind of like go down and look at them and examine them. And then he asked us who we liked and why we liked them. Well, I thought that was pretty fun. And I'm happy to announce that I got an A because I really love that Malachi dog. And let's see. Oh, yeah, that's right. He went best to show at the garden um, <laughs> and went on to produce very well. Yeah, yeah. And um, I've liked so many of the peaks he's, he's brought over that had a lot to do with uh, Scottish boys um, over there, um, Easton and whatever. Um, and I think that David has gone on to produce really gorgeous, gorgeous peaks from all, all, from all this, you know, and he had a very good uh, start. Yeah. So those, those stick in my mind. The Kerry Blue Dog, that's a breed I really like. Um, Kerry Blue Dog, of course, of Bill McFadden's um, was a remarkable animal to me. He might be the best of anything I've ever seen. I'm not sure. Um, but I remember going over him and it was all, it was kind of like being in an altered state in a way. Um, it's just gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Um, he had a dog before the dog I'm telling you about named Hotspur. And I don't know if you remember him. I remember Hotspur, yes. Yeah. And I loved that dog. But then when Mick came along, um, he kind of blew everything else out of the water, right? Just saying. Oh, yeah, that's right. So, I remember when Hotspur came out uh, up here in Canada, I was like, wow, that was that's something else. And then all of a sudden comes Mick, and <laughs> Mick was out of this world. Yeah. You know? Pr pretty unbelievable. Pretty unbelievable. So, you know, along the way, I'm a huge um, hound fan. Um, I love sight hounds, love Afghans and, you know, Salukis and Borzoi and all that kind of business. Um, I'm just a I'm just a dog nut. So to me, you know, just show me anything that's very beautiful, and and I'm in like Flynn, right? So what's next for Danny? What's next for me? Yeah. Well, I'd like to tell you that I'm going to win an enormous uh, prize in your Canadian lottery, which by, by the way is not taxed. Um, <laughs> and then you'll see some business at dog shows, son. Let me just <laughs> tell you. <laughs> um, we're so I live. I my my best friend is Sean Nichols, who yeah. some people will know, and we live momentarily in Calgary. Sean's from Vancouver originally, um, and um, we have two miniature poodles. One of which it, we we bred the mom, Glory, yeah. and we now have Adele, who is in her kennel so i can do this um and she's very very pretty so we have some high hopes for her and glory's off being bred um as we speak to a uh, to a dog of um catherine kennedy's clarion um so we're, we're we're you know we're proceeding with that and uh sean <clears throat> breeds um exotic short hair cats who are very similar to Persians, but they're short hair. Um, and we have five, they're all over the place. Um, and they're just beautiful. And they're so much fun. And we have a litter of kittens that are just getting ready to go to their homes. Um, that was his first litter. And we have a beautiful torty female to keep. So we're very busy, Will. Yeah. Very busy. Are you gonna carry on judging Daniel? 
Well, okay. So, so uh, what ended up happening was, so um, I'm licensed for the toy group and a handful of other breeds amongst other groups. And what ended up happening was COVID, as you know, uh, as, or as I call it, the plague, um, the great interrupter, um, has just kind of put everything on hold, right? Um, I live in Canada now, so uh, there are some rules about, uh, for instance, I can't have an American license and live in Canada and judge in Canada, which sounds, well, which is yeah. very odd to me. But anyway, um, so I have to make up my mind whether I'm going to go through the Canadian system. I clearly can still judge in the States. Um, so, yeah, I do plan on it whenever things open up and, you know, we'll just see. Well, good. I hope you do, Daniel, because I, I always thought I loved watching you judge dogs. So I hope you do carry on. Well, I'm kind of crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I provide love- entertainment, if nothing else. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, no, no, the dog game has been a, an amazing part of my life. It really has. And um, probably, the uh, you know, probably the major... Uh, the biggest influence on me, yeah. you know, that books and art are the biggest influences in my life. And I've gotten to know uh, some l- lovely, lovely people along the way. So right. yourself included. Yeah, well, thank you. Well, I have one more question for you, Danny. Yeah. If you could meet the 20 year old Daniel Augustus, what advice, <laughs> <laughs> what advice would you give him? Well, I would say really work terribly hard not to lose all that beautiful hair. Um, That's number one. Um, You know, I have to tell you, I'll I'll tell you what I would tell them. I would tell them that education in any field, in any, anything you take up or take interest in, become as well-educated as you possibly can, and then go for it. And also to make sure that you find out who the the really best people in the field are and get get to know them and study them as much as you can to try to figure out what you can glean from them that will make you a success. Very good advice. And you didn't ask me, you didn't ask me who I wish I could bring back for 10 minutes okay. or 15 minutes. Who would you like to have dinner with? Who could you, who would you wish you could come bring back and have dinner with? Well, I wish that, <clears throat> of course, you know, it would be nice to have Mark for an hour to have dinner with, but I would really love to have dinner with Tom and Ann Stevenson. And Mark, I think that would be a really great group. I thought the Stevensons were just the loveliest, loveliest people. I knew them fairly well, and I always enjoyed them. They were always exceedingly kind to me. Um, And I miss their elk, you know? I miss people like that. Well, there's no question. Yep. Good choice, Daniel. (laughs) So there you go. All right. Well, thanks, Dan. I mean, I'm glad you put this time aside for me. It was hard. We were chasing. Well, it was just hard for up. us to get our yeah. very busy schedules yeah. to <laughs> coincide. <laughs> I'm sorry for all the problems technically. Well, um, we get to talk to your ear once in a while because you're, Daniel's on his phone because we couldn't get his computer working properly. So every once in a while, exactly. we see your ear. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and this is my me. ear. No, I won't cut it off like, uh, like Van Gogh. Um, <laughs> Anyway, Will, thanks so much. And I think, I think this work you're doing is fantastic because it's connecting people who have been here for a while and also new people and getting dog people to learn about, I think, some people that they should know about. Well, yeah, and it's, it's all part of our history, and I, I don't want to lose right. it. So I really it's very know. important to keep it alive. Yeah. Well, and thank you so much, Danny. And uh, tell, say, tell, say hi to Sean for me. Tell him I'll call him later. <laughs> I sure will. <laughs> bye bye. Right. Thank you. Bye bye. Thanks, Danny. It was great catching up. It was good to see you, even though we saw your ear a lot, but it was good to see you. Uh, if you like what we're doing here, make sure you press the like, share, and subscribe button. 
if you want to get a hold of me, get a hold of me at dogshowtips at gmail.com. Or if you just want to find out what's happening at Will's World, go to willalexander.net. Don't forget about our podcast. Now we have podcasts on Spotify and Apple, and we have a new one coming out too. It's going to be very exciting. See you next week, guys.